Well, here we are in front of the lathe motor mounting underneath. And you can obviously recognise the bit that is connected to the gearbox underneath. Uh, and the motor sits about where my hands are and usually would attach to these four bolts on its own flange and happily spin this around. You will notice that there is also uh, quite a well machined circle within this mountain and that is usually if not always to accurately center the motor flange um, on the mounting so that the spindle shaft is directly in center with the gear uh, shaft on there. Now originally I made a plate that would fit onto here and we have holes where we want them so that the plate itself will fit uh, just as the original motor did in place. Um, I didn't machine any recess into the plate on either side to locate it very accurately inside this diameter here because I was quite pushed with time and there were other means to get it reasonably accurate. Uh, now the original idea was to have these four holes there and we have these four holes where the um, bolts would have to go through the single phase motor flange. Uh, this worked quite well and it spun quite happily but of course the amount of current that the single phase motor took when you switched it on was very prohibitive and uh, wasn't any use for, more use for getting just this, the first speed out which is about 30 revolutions per minute so was, even though this was successful uh, the motor wasn't really useful for anything uh, so that was a bit of a waste of money uh, I obviously decided that it would be a good idea um, to have the original single phase motor bolt holes in line with uh, the bolts on the motor housing and that is because it's got extra strength at these points behind here and really it, it's good practice to hang the motor with two at the top and two at the bottom uh, much better than having say one at top and bottom and two at the side uh, because really if it, you want a lot of support up here to stop the thing dropping. So yeah, I had to put the um, holes in the same place, the same um, axes. Now, this was reasonably easy to cut out. Uh, I just used a hole saw, which I was very surprised that it managed to get through here. I think I just used a standard hair uh, power drill to get through with that. Uh, it didn't have to be totally accurate and I never did any more with it um, once I've done it. Maybe deburred the edges but other than that there's nothing else really not necessary. You can see that this wobbles around a little bit. I probably drilled exactly the right sized holes originally for where I thought these should go and maybe one of them didn't fit or something so I may have drilled it out to the next millimetre size up but it wasn't the best way of doing it and uh, so now that I've got a bit more time to make a new one and I do have a new motor uh, there are lots of more things I can do uh, make it a bit better now obviously I have no holes drilled here except for this one here that came with the panel um, they obviously want these to be cut out of something bigger and these were just the uh, of course that they wanted to discard. Now I've got some rings on here which you may be able to see in the video 
and they are at different diameters. Now we have one at 180 and that is just to tell me that uh, that is the line at which the uh, new motor spigot wants to uh, recess into this and so then we can accurately locate this plate on the new motor. Um, then comes the job of perhaps machining one on the reverse side that will fit into this uh, uh, circle diameter here. Um, but there are problems. First of all the pitch circle diameter of the new bolts that will go through the three phase motor uh, are on a diameter of 215 mil and those bolts are 14 mil wide now this diameter on here is 235 millimeters now what I did with the last motor plate is that I had um, these bolts coming straight through the larger holes at the outer edge of the plate and then the nuts screwed on and tightened no problem. For the motor the bolts came through from the other side and then nuts tightened on from the back of the flange on the motor and it stayed put. That's going to cause uh, a lot of problems now because I use standard hexagonal bolts now because this is 235mm across um, if we think about wh how big these holes are going to be they're going to be 215 mils apart but they're also going to be 14 mil wide so they'll, in, they'll actually go out a further 7 millimeters uh, for every one of the four bolts that does not hit this edge it's actually 3 millimeters away so that's lucky but of course if the bolts or the nuts uh, come through from the other side then the hexagonal heads of a 14 mil bolt will move a lot further out than the 10 mil that we've got left because obviously you know uh, 235 minus a 215 is 20 mil and that means divided between the two sides we've got 10 mil to go out on this side and 10 mil to go out on that side so the bolt itself at 14 mil will not hit this inside edge but the bolt head would so what the plan is is to use um, socket head screws these are a bit small these are only a uh, half inch and the bolt heads are probably about well they're not three quarters of an inch but they're probably about 18 mil or something like that which is about a millimeter under now what we need to find out is whether a 14 mil socket head bolt has a head larger than 20 mil in diameter if it doesn't and it's bang on 20 we've, we've cracked it because the largest bolt head that could come through from the other side of this plate through this 14 mil hole uh, is of course 20 mil so if that's the case then that's a, a very fortunate bit of luck uh, otherwise there's maybe two options you either uh, take down the bolt head which considering that there's a fair bit of meat left on this one if you even have to take it down a millimeter in diameter there should be still enough left in the uh, hex uh, head to have a an Allen bolt in there without uh, or an Allen key in there without it causing any distress to the head. The other option, which is a bit more time consuming, is just to take a little bit away with the grinder on these parts here, 
Uh, I don't really fancy that job at all because it's going to get messy, it's very noisy, this is the whole area is enclosed. Um, the chips are going to be flying everywhere, the sparks can bounce off everything. And uh, even though it might be a perfectly feasible way of doing things, um, it's much easier to take the bottle heads down and the layers. So we may not even have to do that. If we've got bolt heads at a 20 mil, that's fine. But it's going to be a problem which we've got to get past. Now you can see I've got some little marks here with no number next to them. So that's not particularly important because they are on a fairly arbitrary dimension or diameter of about, I think it's about five inches between these two and the same for those. And that so I can get some bolts through and um, anchor them to some T-nuts which will hold it down to the rotary uh, table I've got which is only six inches in diameter. So yeah, the interesting part will be to try and get this 180mm recess exactly concentric with the one on this side. Cause it's not the middle has to be recessed on this side for here. It's actually the outside edge. And it would be nice to have a lathe as big as the one I'm trying to fit this motor to to actually do all this, but of course the other way of doing it is on the milling machine. And we start this by being mounted onto a rotary table and you have a vertical milling drill coming down and uh, you can just spin it out, you can spin this round and that will describe a circle in the metal and then to make it bigger all you have to do is move the table the milling piece stays cut but what you effectively do when you wind it round is you get a, a bigger and bigger circle so it's a very slow way of doing it compared to a lathe but of course it's a perfectly valid way of doing it uh, it just takes more time but it is the only option I've got available because I can't turn this 11 inches on a Myford lathe because that can do about 9 inches maximum so this is no good um, so yeah that's quite a big job to do but yeah I'm going to hopefully try and make a good job of this one uh, just a pity about that hole it's not going to be anywhere near any of the ones I drill uh, the most important ones are the ones to fit on here, the outside ones and one for the motor but I'm going to have to go and find out now if I can get all of some 14mm uh, socket head bolts with a head of no bigger than 20mm in diameter wish me luck Ugh. <sighs>